25 seconds, seven and a half seconds to defuse. Here goes Major Maniac. It's Kleenex to deal with. He finds the opening. It's 1v1. It's 1v1. And Methods clutches again. He goes huge for Ultra. And they get their first home series victory. What a map five it was. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CA Ultra. As you guys can see from the overlay, we have a very, very special guest with us today. Um, I'm your host, Spencer. With me, as always, is Chris. And with us, not always, but this time, is the one, the only, Methods himself. Uh, Methods, how's it going, man? I'm, I'm sure, as you know, I'm doing a lot better than I was a couple months ago. So oh, I bet. that's, uh, that's good. Yeah. Got me up. You know, it's like what 1 p.m. right now. It's still early for me, man. You're, you're really asking a lot for me here. Yeah, you got to roll out of bed and, and hop on the podcast to talk yeah, about I'll, one I'll of the uh, probably the, at My... this point the biggest moment in Toronto esports history. Yeah, so you absolutely love to see it. Wow. I yeah, just... we wanted to catch you after you a like couple that. of fresh coffees. Yeah, when you put it like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I don't know I how else to put it. Sports... Perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. So just, I mean, again, uh, we'll get into some questions in a bit, but just, I just want to hear your initial thoughts, man. How's it been since you guys finally got the, the chip, the chip what on your shoulder, sort of, right? What have I been doing? So I'll give you my step-by-step. -step. After you saw me celebrate <laughs> on stream, I uh, opened my Tito's <laughs> bottle, poured myself a little drink. Yeah. Uh, luckily here in Toronto, we're, we're doing pretty well with COVID. So patios are open. Phase three is yes, obviously yeah. opening Friday. So we had a nice team meal after the victory, which I you know, got a couple round of shots to the boys. You know, of we're all of age, you know, not to worry about, but yeah. just wanted to celebrate it like we should. You know, during these obviously weird times, it's been hard to feel normal. You know, it's, it's not every day you so like being social and going out for drinks used to be yeah. something that you don't think twice about. And yeah. now that you know things are starting to clear up a little bit especially here it's uh it's special to get with the guys especially after a victory like that and just to yeah. see just see the happiness in person it's a lot different talking to you over a webcam or, or talking to you over a microphone being there in person and enjoying that you know victory together was special for me special for us it was uh it was a good time woke up the next day not feeling great yeah. uh 1 p.m <laughs> not gonna ask you what yeah. not gonna ask you what time you woke up <laughs> yeah. dude i woke up earlier than i should i woke up at like 10 a.m and oh, then, that's the worst. When you're like too dehydrated, and you like wake up, and you're like, yeah. Listen, I had a nice. I, I had like so usually like I have like a cheat meal. This time I had like a victory, three day cheat day. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I woke up, had McDonald's, and I had chicken parm, then I had cookies. Oh. Listen, I, it was like a big relapse. I used to be like 65 pounds heavier. Luckily, we're back on track, but it was. It. it was tough. Hey man, talk, anyone, talk about. It, yeah, I was gonna say if anyone deserves it right now, it, it's you guys. You know what I mean. So I, I don't mind having the the cheat week there uh, uh, exactly. after a performance talking like that. To, talking about chicken parm, where where in Toronto? Where in Toronto you getting chicken parm right now? What's your secret? Uh, so the place I had the other day, probably it's called Fusaro's, if I'm saying it correctly. That place probably has the best chicken parm I've had here. I've had Fusaro's really. Listen, I'm still like. It's hard, man, because like I want to go to the places and actually, yeah. like for example, Soto Soto, which is famous because of Drake and a bunch yes. of other people. Yeah. Uh, I, heard I was gonna order. Good. I was gonna order that, and then I kind of got yelled at by a bunch of people. They were like, "No, your first experience there has to be there." And I was like, "Okay, fine." Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, um, and then a, a lot. Also, a lot of Italian places here are uh, sort of like legitimate Italian because chicken parm is sort of like an Italian American dish. You know, if you're going yeah. to like a really authentic Italian place, most of the time you won't find it. Yeah. And I feel like you have a lot of those places here. So there's actually not even that many places to get it here, but you know, Fusaro's is good. Trattoria Tabernetti was good. Uh, Porchetta and co had a good sandwich. I'm learning. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compile a nice list when it's all said and done and make sure everybody knows where to go for their parm. Yeah. Loves. Please send that to us. So yeah. I'm guessing you're just making it in house most of the time, then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm trying. You know, I'm, st I'm, st I'm still trying to perfect <laughs> the recipe. A lot of people are waiting for the Chef Tony episode, but yeah. you know, it's got to be perfect before that comes out. So I'm still, it's, it's, it's you can't rush perfection. Yeah, I was actually gonna ask you what's your secret, like how to, how do you perfect it? But I guess you just haven't gotten there yet. Nope, I can't even. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, it's not there yet. Too busy perfecting his Call of Duty play. Yeah. Yep. That's one v twos. Talking, talking about Call of Duty. So you guys, you guys, it's clear that you know with a top four finish in the tournament before this and your chip at Toronto, you guys have started out the season a little bit slower, but have clearly built steam 
throughout the season to this yeah. culmination finish. What, what's changed for you guys? Like, what do you guys think has kind of helped you build this success? Yeah, I mean, I think the 10-man roster, you look at there's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I think we switched our roster out quite a bit, and I think that sort of pushed us back a little bit just because I think Call of Duty is all about getting those, you know, getting those reps in, being yeah. in every yeah. single situation as many times mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, that being said, we still, we were never bad. Like, for example, we, for sure. we brought... We brought Chicago yeah. round 11, game five in Atlanta on land. So, I mean, losses like that. We've had a lot of round 11 losses. Mm -hmm. Also, to think the 10-man roster, I mean, you will never hear me say it was a bad thing because looking at our current roster we just won with, four of the players on the team, besides me, weren't on the starting roster to begin with in the beginning of the year. So, I think pros and cons. And, yeah, so all, all four players mm -hmm. besides me were not even on the starting roster. So, I mean, it just wow. goes to show that doing things differently can work. And, uh, you know, it was it, it just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just really don't catch fire and you're sort of yeah. just sort yeah. of fighting from the back, trying to trying to reach your way to the top. Like I said, a lot of close games that were super frustrating. Like I, I said this before, I, I think I'd rather lose 6-0 and, and 250 to 10 every game than actually go last map, you know, last round. Just because it's so frustrating to get to that final point mm -hmm. and not being able to close it out. Luckily, this weekend, that wasn't the case. Yeah. Luckily, it was sort of like the polar opposite this weekend. It was sort of like yeah. every single clutch moment somehow went into our favor. And I yeah. think that was just God. Like, all right, we, we, we have to – we owe this team clutches. Like, they, they've been clutched on and clutched yeah. in so many times that – it's only right. So yeah. it's like the statistical probability, right? Like as you just keep like re-rolling yeah. that situation, you're just bound to have it fall in your lap eventually because you're yeah. right. Cause it wasn't even just like you said, it was the Chicago game, but there was like Atlanta earlier as well. You went round yeah. five. Uh, I don't know if it was round 11, but the Dallas empire was another really close one. OGLA yeah. when you were top four, like it seemed like you're right. Like it was always, Oh, the OGLA one was yeah. tough. Man. Yeah, that was tough. That should, oh been a final, that should have been a finals appearance. No, for sure. And I mean, when we talked about it on the show, but like that was another one where I was like, man, that was just, again, like that was, this team, I feel like, needed to get over the hump. And then once you finally did it, versus yeah. I think it was Atlanta two tournaments ago, I was like, okay, let's see if they can build on this. And I, th I feel like since then, the clutch moments have just started to like fall in place because you're right. Like There's a couple of times in the season where I was like, they're finally going to do it. Um, and then now you're really starting to see the light come to fruition. Yeah, this weekend was a redemption weekend for me. I was super stressed because I feel like I yeah. single-handedly costed my team in the last tournament just because... Uh, versus New York, I mean, we beat Atlanta, which is huge. huge. And then we go against New York. And I mean, yeah. looking at it realistically, if we beat Atlanta, we should be able to beat New York. Not easily, but if we beat Atlanta, we can beat anybody. And then I sort of threw game one and three. Uh, it sort of flew under the radar because it wasn't really like – I didn't lose a big gunfight. I just made pretty piss poor plays at, at horrible times. And like, you yeah. know, a lot of people talk about this being a dream job, and it is, but – letting your teammates down like that you have yeah. people who are riding on you for a good amount of money livelihood keeping their jobs like there's so much that goes into this and it's super yeah. stressful being in one of the most competitive leagues in the world so i put a lot of weight on my shoulders for that tournament like i i was just so upset with myself like, i've been doing this for a while and like yeah. to feel like i let down my young guns was just like what am i doing yeah. so this weekend i was like i'm not i'm going off and yeah. luckily i think i had a, a few key moments and then Completely the whole team just like everybody i mean we had some unsung heroes i mean you look a lot yeah. of people are sort of talking about me and cammy but you look at kleenex classic and bant they made a huge attitude bants in the dallas series won Dude. us the tournament yeah he, bants like people should be talking about bants more because versus dallas which was our most important series of the weekend okay. you know you look at the final and that's awesome but beating dallas cemented us in winners bracket for champs that was the most important match of the tournament and he pretty much took yeah. over so yeah. a lot of a lot of big plays that sort of set us up for those big impact moments that people are talking about that are sort of swept under the rug and people aren't really talking about. So I need to shout out my teammates and just say how influential they were in this tournament. Like, I'm so happy we can get Kleenex and Cammy their first championship. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. So I was like actually going to say, I sort of had this like prep for when we do our, like, you know, our recap or whatever with, with just Chris and I, but I was like, oh, I mean, I feel sorry. like, I feel like, oh, hey, don't, I'd love to hear <laughs> no, from you. It just fair. validates what I was sort of thinking, but I feel like Bance is like, like just like an unsung hero in, in ways, right? Like, I feel like he just does like the little things right. Um, and he doesn't like necessarily have these like massive pop-up moments. Like you said, like where Cammy's like just, you know, going like, you know, hmm. 12 and three on Piccadilly, you know what yeah. I mean? Or you're putting like a 1.35 KD. Like he doesn't really necessarily have those moments, but I feel like he also yeah. like, 
never really has those moments where he's like, oh man, he starts off like 0-12, right? Like he's always like in the thick of things. And I feel like he's just like a really good person to like round out this roster. Um, yeah, no, he's a no, he's a, he's a key piece. And he's also super vocal. I think, I, yeah. he's a great I, think, I think one misconception is that I'm like the leader of this team. When to be honest, when it comes to in-game stuff, I don't think I am. If anything, if yeah. I were to pick one guy who is sort of like the overall voice, I would say... It's Ben, but at the same time, I think we have a really good balance here on this team where I don't think we have a leader. I think it's more mm -hmm. so just like conversation through all of us and our coaching staff, and then we sort of come to conclusions through that, and then it's just sort of like whoever remembers to uh, like hammer down a point. Like, for example, if we want to play a certain hill a certain way, any of the five guys would be like, make sure we're doing this like we talked about. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I will say in Search and Destroy, Ben is – pretty much our play caller. I mm -hmm. think it goes like him that I'm probably like secondary Cammy as well. I mean, we just have such a good balance of like yeah. calling plays yeah. and trusting each other and, and being confident in what we call. So well, yeah, I think that's what you them. need. I think I was just going to say, like, I think it's totally, sorry, cause you can go, I'm taking your, you go. First. <laughs> yeah. Joe, well, I just wanted to comment being like, um, yeah, I think that's what you kind of need in a good championship team. And I'd also say one of the big differences for me in between this tournament and the last one was in the last uh, couple tournaments where you guys were performing well, but maybe not up to a, a, like a winning standard was the fact that you would have certain people that played well all tournament, but then those were kind of like those only standout individuals. Whereas in this tournament, every single matchup you guys had, there was a different person that was performing well. Like, so yeah. once again, Vance, Vance and Dallas Empire, Kleenex was popping off a couple different times. You were obviously phase, popping yeah. off like, like um there there were a bunch and there's times when um even like classic because some people would criticize him for some of his like S D stuff, but I know there's spurts where he would go, you know, five and one on S D and just really pop off. So there was never a time where everybody wasn't like performing well. Yeah, there's I always mean, a time. To, to speak on classic, I mean as soon as we lost, his first his first statement was holy shit, I just had the worst tournament of my life and we won. <laughs> then like, and like looking at stats, like you'd be like, okay, yeah, Nick played pretty awful. But then you watch the matches back like we did and it's yeah. like, you notice the key things he's doing on the map and the key mm -hmm. two pieces he's getting. Like, it doesn't matter what his KD is. Like, he made yeah. influential plays that helped us win in certain moments and that's all you can ask for. Like, you're not going to have every single player dropping a 1.3. Like, that's, sure. that's just not how it works. Like, yeah. there are, there's only so many kills on the map to get and I yeah. think, you know, it's good to have a mix of, you know, a lot of slang power as well as just fundamental gameplay and, and knowing mm -hmm. what to do and when to, to set your players up. And, you know, I can't stress enough how influential every single player was. Yeah. You know, there, there was not one player that you could say is the reason we won this tournament. It was just sure. us as a collective just grinding it out. Yeah, and I think that like, mm -hmm. the classic was a good point because I'm starting to like try to understand the fundamentals of Call of Duty like more. Obviously, Chris and I come from the Overwatch background. That's where we started doing this whole thing, and and we were new to Call of Duty this year. And it took us a while to get on the podcast because I didn't just want to hop on like and only look at KD, right? Like I want to yeah. at least understand a bit more. But I think it was um hard point, and I, for, uh, I forget the map. But there was a moment where like where the A side was preferential, and like you're right, like Kleenex kind of comes around, and I think like. He gets the initial pick, he wins a gunfight, and he's about to get traded out. And it's like classes coming from the right who's able to hit that pick and then get a two piece and it flips the spawn for you guys. And it was just like yeah. moments like that where it's like, man, like him, like that SMG duo of like him and Kleenex have like come up clutch in such key moments. And even though they like this raw stats don't necessarily show that, I do think classic, yeah, is it was a big reason why like your team was able to be as successful as they were. Um, oh, I, no. think the biggest... I mean, he's, he's, oh. uh, I'm going to guess him up a little more because he's been around for a while. And yeah. the one thing I'll say about him is he knows what to do and when. I mean, even, even if he's mm -hmm. not getting the kills at the moment, you're not always going to get the kills. You're going to lose gunfights. But yeah. he's he's making sure he doesn't screw up that process of how we're playing the game. Like, even if he's not getting his kills, he's not switching his gameplay up. He's doing whatever he needs to do to, to mm -hmm. make sure we win. And, I mean, look, look at our first mapping against Optics weekend. He, he led the category in kills. He was our... The most kills in that first map, influential to that momentum. And that's the first map of the tournament. You know, if if we lose yeah. that map, who knows what could have happened? You know what I mean? So, yeah. mm -hmm. just a uh, big place from him, big place from everybody, and uh, I'm just so happy to see it come together. It's, yeah. it, it, it couldn't have come at a better time. It literally, couldn't have. Like I, I was even joking around. I was like, man, like people are gonna start thinking the Call of Duty League is is rigged. Because like <laughs> yeah. because not only was this like oh man homestand they win it like you also had to have 
Paris goes second in the previous tournament to set up the storyline of like Ultra has to win at their own home. Oh, right? Because they had it top four. I wish you could feel my stress during that because in my head I'm like, all right, Paris about to get destroyed. Yeah, we're golden. Like nothing Let's to worry go. about. Like all we gotta do is I think you know win two games or, yeah, or make four, semis and and, yeah. and 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 we're good. Fast forward, I'm watching Paris in a final and I'm shitting my pants. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> I was like, how is this? Like I was like, this has to be. I, I actually tweeted after. Uh, I said when they made finals, I tweeted, I'm convinced this is just one giant elaborate yeah, troll. And uh, yeah. you know, at that time, I'd be lying if I if I was sitting there thinking positive things. It was more so like we have the hardest tournament of the year coming up. We need to show up and get in the finals or win the thing. And in hindsight, mm -hmm. I mean, we got it done. But I mean, at at the time, it was For definitely sure. stressful because it was like, you know, if we didn't win any of the other tournaments that were a little lighter when it comes to competition, we're mm -hmm. in for uh, a rough one here. And then. You know, I, I think that we just used that as fuel and went into each map with uh, a game plan. I mean, I, I can mm -hmm. shout out my coaches for days. Marky B and Flux, I mean, they made sure we were going into every single series, every single map um, with as much info as possible, making sure we were uh, as confident as possible. I, I think one of the things that they did a good job with this year is, you know, not even talking about the COVID stuff. I mean, it, it's already pretty demoralizing in general, playing yeah. from your apartment yeah, and, sure. and not going to tournaments. Then you add on the you know the the super close losses, which sort of demoralize even more. It's like shit, we're we're right there, but we're not there, and it's uh it's very easy to to go down the rabbit hole if you let yourself. And I think our yeah. coaches did a huge job at like just keeping us confident and making sure that we knew that they were still confident in us. So I, I think that was big. Yeah, and I love that you like sort of bring this stuff to light, man. And you talked about it earlier, and I was going to ask more on it. And it's sort of like you're right; people sort of do view this as a dream job. Um, but I think like there's so much stress that like goes into it and so much stuff behind the scenes that not a lot of people fully understand. Like, man, everybody makes mistakes at the jobs that they do for a living. Right. It's just like yeah. yours is in such a public manner that like everybody can have an opinion right on Twitter, on Reddit, on whatever, yeah, like us. Uh, on top like of the us. fact that like, yeah, like us <laughs> on top of the fact <laughs> that like, you're also playing like, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours a day, like in your house, like, man, like, yeah. Like how important is it really to just sort of get out of that funk? And just like that, the, the mental game of the Call of Duty that like not everybody sort of sees or talks not, about. And, and not only that, just to add on, not only that, but also like, you know, you're playing your house. Like you got to kind of have like that separation, right? You're kind of like a life apart from that. Is that hard to really get, especially when you're stuck inside a lot playing like from... <sighs> Well, we luckily, are? so I, I have a two-bedroom apartment, and I, I made sure of that because I really wanted to have two different spaces. I wanted to have yeah, a place where I can sleep and, and, you know, relax. And I also wanted, like, my workspace where as soon as I enter this room, like, I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. So mm -hmm. touch back on what Spencer was saying. Uh, I'm 22. I've been competing for eight years. The question I've gotten more than anything is, don't you get bored of what you're doing? And my answer is, of course, like... I love what I do, but I stare at the same game all day, every day for a year at a time. Luckily, our game is different where we sort of get a new game every year. It's like uh, every yeah. year. It's like that breath of fresh air. Yeah. But I'd be lying to you just like anybody else would be lying to you. I I'm sure every single person in the world has bad days. They they get bored of their job. It's, it's draining, especially at this level, man. I mean, mm -hmm. we are one of 60 players, and mm -hmm. I think making a mistake in this world impacts – more than anything just because you make a mistake it can cost you your job you know what i mean like th there are hundreds of people gunning for your exact position so it's important that you prepare as best as possible you don't get complacent mm -hmm. you be humble and you uh you give it your all because this is not a career path that's necessarily super safe i mean you you have to prove why you deserve it every step of the way and and i think that's one of the great things about it like it's it's truly it is a dream job, but it is not all, you know, sunshine, sunshine. and rainbows. It is, of course. It is, it is stressful, and uh, I, I can't even, I can't even give you the words to to explain how stressed I was before our tournament win. Because, like I said, I, I put a lot of blame on myself, and you know, these thoughts start creeping in the back of your head, like, uh, you know, hey, like, maybe, like, you could lose your job soon. Like, yeah, it, it that's sort of like the extreme, like overthinking it and sort of just dwelling on sure. negative thoughts, but. It's a, uh, it's it's a scary reality because it's happened to players this year who who you would never even think would ever be on a bench or not playing. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's 
it's stressful, but I, I, I love nothing more. It is, uh, I love every second of it. You know, there are bad days just like there are with anything, but it is to, to be doing what I'm doing at the age I'm doing it and to be doing it for so long, to be considered a veteran, but still being so young. I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't stress enough how, how much mm -hmm. this world means to me for sure. Yeah. I think it's really well said. And I mean, you're right. Like, and not even, you don't have, even have to look across the league, right? I mean, you, you guys have a 10 man roster. I'm sure that you know how stressful it can be when you got five oh, people I'm, on the bench, uh, just sitting there waiting for a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, we what come from the like, Overwatch background too. Right. And it was, uh, one of the, like the first questions I asked Dominique was like, Hey, Toronto Defiant did a, a big roster last year. Uh, and they had a lot of issues with it in terms of like, yeah, like the sort of house yeah. environment that it provides because the guys you're eating with and practicing with every day are also the guys getting for your spot. And I was like, that's really interesting that like Jay was like, okay, not for us and went to a smaller roster this year. And then she comes in and makes a 10 person roster. Um, so I can see how that would like just add to that. You know what I mean? But on top of I mean, it, at the same I time, mean, it also allows you, like you said, to bring in the substitutes. I think it's like a really interesting balance that you guys had to go I mean, yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? I, I think in different games, subs are are the norm. Like, uh, for example, like, uh, Sureford, Agilities, I'm not, I'm not really updated on Overwatch, but from what I know, they're very strong, popular players. And I see some maps where they're not playing. And I'm like, if I were to get subbed out on a map, I would probably throw a fit and lose my mind because that's <laughs> not what we're used to. Because yeah. the way I would interpret that personally, and, and that's, that might be a character flaw in myself just because it's new to me, I would be like, I'm doing something wrong. They think I'm doing something wrong. I would sort of think of the negative aspects of it, yeah. But mm -hmm. to the contrary, the, the the ten man roster, it really makes sure you're on top of your game. Like I have not slacked off once this year. At least I don't think so, because yeah. there there are people gunning for my spot. You know what I mean? Like we have yeah. a ten man roster of players who, you know, the it's bitter. Like they want to see me win, but in a sense they don't because it's like yeah. all right, this guy's if this guy's getting destroyed, I want to take his spot, which only makes sense. I mean, if if I was on the bench. I would to be to be 100 transparent. If I was on the bench, I would be looking at me and going, "I want that guy to get destroyed, and I want him to be awful." And that's yeah. just because I I want to compete. That's just competitive mm -hmm. nature. And I'd be lying if I said I'd be sitting there rooting for me to win because I, I I I just wouldn't. Yeah, but was just, uh, was, I, part of that might be like it, obviously Overwatch is definitely different different heroes and like completely different skill sets, so it is a little bit different. But exactly. I mean, I feel like it's yeah. just it's such a hard thing to balance between you want your you're right you want your own self to succeed and to show everybody what you're capable of. But at the same time, like you are on a team, <laughs> like you're supposed to be rooting for the team that you're on. Right. Yeah. And it's not uh, yeah. like the I mean, NHL where like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. It's like, no, like one player is going to play the entire match. The entire yeah. So, season. uh, this isn't public, but I'll, I'll give you guys some Intel. Uh, before that New York home series, I was supposed to be benched for search and destroy. So I wasn't supposed to play at all. Um, really? yeah. And then it just so turns out that, some things happened and I ended up playing and now looking to this weekend, it's like, wow, imagine I was, I was, was benched in church. So, I mean, I think everything comes full circle. Yeah. And, uh, to speak to that, I mean, uh, in the beginning of the year too, uh, they benched me on one map in practice for cave, uh, which was like my map. Like I'm an AR player cave should be the map I should be yeah. playing. And I'd be lying if I told you I reacted to that. Well, I, I kind of regret the way <laughs> I reacted to that. But it was just new to me, and, and I kind of was told at a weird time where, you know, I was sort of told in front of people rather than one-on-one, -on -one, and I just had a pretty right. poor reaction. And then when you actually sit there and think about it, it's like you realize that the people making those decisions only want the best for the team. Like, it, it's it, it's nothing against me, but I'd be lying if it, it – it, it's hard to not take it personally in the yeah. heat of the moment. And then when you actually think about mm -hmm. it, it's like – you know, big picture, like, I get why this happened. I don't agree with it, but I can respect your decision. You know what I mean? So yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's, it's one of those things where it's like, man, like, like, why do we make mistakes? Right. It's like to learn from them. So I think it's important yeah. that you did yeah. take that step back. And like, even though you might've made the mistake in the moment, like reflect upon it and try to look at it positively because you're right. Like I can't imagine if I would just get bench, right. If Chris calls me up, he's like, Hey, Spencer, you're benching the podcast. Like we're bringing, yeah, you've been ripping just the place. I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, it's an ego. It's just an ego hit. You know what I mean? 100%. It's just like, like, yeah. I don't think anybody wants to admit that someone's better than them at something or or isn't good at something. So, it was 100%. definitely a hit to my ego, but it also it brought me back to reality. And yeah. to mm -hmm. I, I was telling our CEO a couple months back, the the map that I was benched for, I wasn't fully benched. Like me and another player were splitting time on it to sort of see what was better. Yeah. 
I I turned into Zeus on that map. I was <laughs> I, I, I was be, be, because of that motivation and me like oh what's going on here. I was yeah. instantly that much better on it, and I was like, "All right, you needed that. Like that was exactly that was better for you than it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I totally, I totally understand that. Like, it's just what makes um, separates a good player from a great player isn't necessarily how they perform at the best of times, but it's obviously you know how you react and perform at the worst of times. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, that's super interesting. Just to switch gears a little bit back to the tournament in general. You had, I'd say you had some really, really, really nutty plays. And one of the ones that stuck out for me the most was when you had that absolute ninja defuse yeah. on yeah. SD against Atlanta. Tell us what was going through your mind during that. Like, why, yeah. why did you make that decision? Because I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to preface this a little bit. When I saw that, I initially my heart stopped. I was like, there's no way he's I mean, listen, it looks like a nervous play. Like, it looks like, all right, this kid's going to hop the bomb and hope for the best. But realistically, it was pretty calculated. Like, I didn't have dead silence. So wherever I went, he would have heard me and just knew I wasn't near the bomb. I was also there super quick. So, like, when you hop the bomb that fast it's a lot more likely to get away with it because he's not going to expect you to be there that quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just sort of like this perfect storm where the timing worked out in my favor. Like the, the COD gods are watching over me and, and gave me the good timing. And uh, it worked out. Uh, just every time I ninja defuse, I'll show you exactly. I close my eyes and I look down. I, <laughs> you can't even look? Every, every single time. I, That's so I, funny. During that play, I was not looking at my screen. All I, like it was just audio cues. My, yeah. I just heard my teammates start going nuts, and I was like, "You love Let's to go. see it." That's why I, yeah. I also see you hop up and you immediately start shooting the right window. I'm like, "Oh my god, he's not there!" Like it was just yeah. so funny that it was sort yeah. of one of those moments where yeah, it was awesome. Right. That is what I said to Spencer. Saying I was right. like, "It must have been some sort of it wasn't a bad play. It must have been some sort of counter play where like the other guy doesn't think he's gonna do it because that would be like kind of I don't know." Yeah, it was and, just. Because it, it, if I tried doing anything else, he would have heard me and I was screwed. I mean, dead silence mm -hmm. is so impactful in this game where it's like, yeah. yeah, if you don't have it, you're practically an elephant. And I didn't have it. So that I saw it as my only play. And luckily, I did it because who knows what hap what would have happened if well, I didn't. You know yeah, what I mean? 100%. I mean, it went round 11. I mean, obviously, that's not how it works. But, like, you know, what yeah. I mean? yeah, if you don't win yeah. that round, like, things aren't looking nearly as good. Um, but also another play that, like, really stuck out to me. And this is... um. And again, I don't want to come across disrespectful whatsoever. So if I am misinformed, I do apologize. But I do think no, that you might have been somebody who coming into this year or at the very least these tournaments, I don't know if like you're synonymous with the clutch factor. Like I think that's been a bit a knock <laughs> on you throughout your career. So I do, I am sorry, but I have to ask the question because- No, you're good, you're good. Um, I actually tuned into your stream a couple of times. I remember one time you were just like, you're talking CDL, but you're just going through like your like uh, most blown 1v1s or whatever on stream, yeah, which yeah. one was hilarious, super entertaining stream. Yeah. But two, I was like, damn, like a little bit unfortunate. Like how big was it for you to like in the biggest tournament of the year, you are you have the opportunity to, like you said, get Kleenex and Camry their first chip, get Toronto their first chip at their own home series. And it's a 1v2. It's not even a 1v1. Uh, yeah. You have I to mean, clutch listen. up the 1v2. There is nothing worse than having that type of negative stigma around your name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially because I've been playing for eight years. And, like, I know, at least I think, I'm, I'm a little, probably a little biased, but I think I'm pretty clutch. <laughs> like, I think I've always had a pretty good mind when it comes yeah. to the clutch. Yeah. But no matter what, I botched some big ones, and that's what people see. And yeah. I don't fault anybody for thinking I'm not good in the clutch. If I watched the same thing, I'd be like, okay, this kid is shit yeah. in the clutch. Yeah. But... <laughs> For it to be me was just so good for my confidence and just mm -hmm. overall just like reputation relief. I was just like, thank God that was me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, thank God. And even my teammates, like, I'm sure they were shitting their pants when they saw that I was the last one alive because they were probably like, oh, no, no. Just, just because I don't, I mean, realistically speaking, like, when it comes to the clutch, I don't have a good track record when it yeah. comes to the big matches. I mean, I lost to the big one at Champs, which is probably my most notorious. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I, I think this sort of, you know, it, people will look at this now instead of that. Like, yeah. I got four kills versus yeah. undoubtedly a top two team in the game all year long yeah. in the biggest round of the year for my team, and I ended up 1v2ing mm -hmm. at the end. So, um, it's, I can't put it into words. I'm so, uh, my dad said it best. He said that was fucking awesome, and, yeah. you know, that's... <laughs> That, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah, because I, I, I one, I, I would have said the exact same thing. I was like, man, if somebody's going to clutch up, I hope it's Method so he can just sort of get that like monkey off his back. And then yeah. also, mm -hmm. too, I loved your 
uh, you put a tweet out there where uh, somebody was like, oh, my prediction is like it goes around 11 and Methods yeah. chokes the 1v1. And you're like, oh, thank God it was a 1v2. I thought that was yeah. just like really funny. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, sh- I was scrolling Reddit one night because I was like, right, let's see what people are saying. Yeah. And I saw that. I was like, oh, this is, this is content. This is, this is a good <laughs> tweet. Good content, yeah. It was But yeah. Um, so, I mean, we got that out of the way. Sort of like just, again, like love to hear the thoughts on like what really went into the calculation sort of behind the scenes on, on, on finally getting that victory. I think before we move on to just a little bit about champs, um, I just want to bring it back because one question I had for you guys was, I think there was a, a turning point for this team um, earlier in the year, a little bit where mm-hmm. obviously you guys were struggling at the start um, and then things go online and, and whatnot happens. Um, and I'm not putting too much, I don't get the gases player up too much, but I do think that like Kleenex coming into the lineup seemingly just sort of allowed the entire team as a whole to just sort of perform better. I know you've gassed up a lot of people, but I, he's someone who's like impressed me in the way that he plays, even though sometimes the stats don't show it. Like his domination, I think needs a bit of work, but like whatever, like that's just like my opinion. Um, but like how, like what really went into that moment? I think I saw the stat where it was like, since Kleenex came, you guys have had a 73% map win rate, like something crazy yeah, yeah, like no, he, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will gas this kid up quite yeah. a bit. Super <laughs> young, probably one of the nicest kids I ever met. A little yeah. Danish kid. Reminds me like, like, like you think of, Dana, you're like, okay, Astralis. Those guys are goats. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like we have a little cog goat here in Toronto. <laughs> um, to be honest, I mean, listen, this 10-man roster, I didn't know what to think of a lot of the players in the team. You know, uh, I've always played with what you, I would say is upper echelon players. Gunless, Looney, TJ, Scump, yeah. Krim. So this was new. It's like we got a bunch of young guns, a lot of veterans who, I mean, if you look at our roster, it was it's scraps. It, it, it's not mm-hmm. super high-paid players who mm-hmm. are – you know, like you get what I'm saying. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we yeah. have we have some big names, but it was exactly it was a different approach. So uh, obviously we tried a bunch of different things, and now you know you look at someone like Metals, who's an unreal player. Yeah. But mm. you bring in Kleenex, a little little different play style, both very talented, but Kleenex's play style sort of fits the team better. Like that, that's just sometimes how it works. For sure. And the, the the way I describe him is he's just annoying. He, he's an annoying yeah. player. Like he had a horrible start this weekend, I think, to one of the maps that we were winning. I think he was like three and eighteen, five and twenty. Yeah. But you but you look at that and you're like, okay, that that's an annoying five and twenty. Like yeah. he's yeah. not he he's not getting kills, but he is bugging the shit out of the other team. And that's when he's playing bad. When he's popping off, he makes the game so easy because he's our he's our entry guy. He is yeah, the guy exactly. who's going to go in first. He has the finesse. He has the movement. So when he's starting off with two, it's basically impossible to lose. I mean, he, he's just too yeah. impactful that when he's playing like that, it, it's just going to work out. And you know, for him, he was, on the, he was on the bench for the majority of the year. I, I'm I'm sure he believes in himself as. Like I said, if I'm on the bench, I'm looking at players on the starting roster. I'm going, okay, I'm better than him, him, and him. I should be playing over him. So I'm sure it's frustrating for him. And here he is. He gets this shot, and he's lights out. And yeah. he, he wins mm-hmm. a championship, and everybody's talking about him. And listen, I'll gas any one of my teammates. They're all they're all so good. But I'm super happy for him especially just because not the biggest brand, not the biggest name. Yeah. He, he proved himself with gameplay, nothing else, you know. Yeah. Not a big stream, not funny tweets through his game. And, and I respect the hell out of that. So the, the kid's a warrior. Yeah. And he really, sh- I think he always plays yeah. his bets maps versus phase two, which I think is really important because they're so fast. Like, I just love the way he plays so fast. Like you said, annoying. He's like always in the mm-hmm. action. It's almost like the way that like I kind of play. The only difference is like he's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, like, he could go in and get away with it. Whereas I just like feed my little brains out. But like yeah. he actually has like <laughs> yeah. the mechanical movement skill to like be able to get a trade. I feel like he's also so good at like getting a trade. And either getting out or like That's getting that I mean, two piece yeah. without getting like traded out, which I feel like is so yeah, yeah. important. Like the, especially in a five man call, dude, like it's so important. Yeah, no, that he's adds to the, he's like that adds a, to the clutch factor. Sorry. Yeah, no, he's uh he's good, man. He's that's all I can say is he knows what he's doing. He he brings a lot to the team. He's soft spoken, mm-hmm. and that 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 was probably our biggest worry of bringing him on is. Mm-hmm. He's not a super loud guy. He's very nice, but also pretty quiet. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. I think one misconception I had was that his communication wasn't going to be good. And mm-hmm. I was wrong about that because I don't think, you know, you can be soft-spoken and still be a good communicator. Like when For you sure. start seeing him, you start to realize, you know, this kid's pretty intelligent. He makes some good calls. And, you know, he raises his voice when he has to. And I think, think that's a big mix because in 5v5, mm-hmm. Communication could get flooded. You know, you have a lot of people sure. talking, especially in a game like ours, where it's we have the respawn modes, where it's like everything is happening nonstop. Yeah. So I I, I think it's actually good to have someone a little more soft spoken, where you know he'll raise his voice when he has to, but other than that, he, he doesn't flood the comms too much. 
No. Yeah, what, sure. that, especially those Astro listenings. Whenever I hear Toronto Ultra speaking, I'm like, man. Yeah. I don't know. No, it must be so hard to get information through. I so love that call that he does that, but I wish Overwatch did that. It's so cool that they yeah. have like, you actually see oh, like, the call. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I wish they had listenings more. I think they do them a good amount, but I think, I mean. Yeah, I agree. I, listenings are just, it's just raw. It is It is exactly what you want to hear. You know what I mean? No, I completely it's, it's exactly what I want to see. Now with that, obviously you guys have pretty much had what I would say is one of the most perfect ramp ups to champs. You got a top four, you got oh, yeah. a first place, but champs is coming up. Tell us, what do you guys have to do to win this? Yeah, we need to prepare like we're dog shit. We need to... Yeah. Yeah. We need to get off the high horse, humble ourselves, which I think we're yeah. doing a pretty good job of. Like, if we prepare for this tournament like we just won, we will get destroyed. Like, I'm I'm pretty I'm confident when I say that. Like, mm -hmm. if, if if we go into practice with egos and we're like, ah, oh, this wouldn't happen in the tournament, whatever, we destroy these guys. Like, yeah. we will be awful. So we need to go into practice with that same intensity that we were before that win. Like, mm -hmm. this is important. This is life changing. We want to win this tournament. What can we do to make that happen? I, I think we need to revamp our search and destroy because I think a lot of people will be looking at that now. Like, <clears throat> methods goes here. This guy yeah. does this. We can counter mm -hmm. this. I think we're going to put a lot of work in there because, you know, it, if we do the same thing, we will get countered and, and lose pretty easily. So, I mean, just revamping mm -hmm. gameplay, yeah. adapting on the fly, and, and just overall, like, just because we won doesn't mean that there weren't negative takeaways. Like sure. we won, but there were still a lot of close games that could have been, you know, bigger blowouts, a lot of close rounds that could have been safer. For example, in that game five versus phase, we botched one of the biggest four V twos I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. I was dead and I was shitting my pants. I was like, how did you guys just lose that? Yeah. That was the easiest thing I ever saw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, th there's no room for that. The biggest term of the year. So it, it's yeah. just ironing out the, the remaining kinks and, and preparing like we need to without, I mean, we have to, this, this tournament's in the past, you know, we have to go into this next tournament and completely forget, forget about this one. Yeah. Like we didn't yeah. win. In fact, we are shit. Like that, yeah. that, that needs to be the mindset, the mentality. No, that's really important, especially against a team like London, who I feel like you guys haven't played a lot all year. So it's going to be really yeah. interesting to, to see that matchup because London's another team that's good, but I think it's totally winnable, right? Like it's not like you're sitting there getting matched up against uh, one of these like really, really tough teams right off the rip. Um, but I think it's important that you don't have, that you don't have that mentality that you guys are there like grinding every single day trying to practice it. And you're right, like I, I do expect uh, if if it's another one v one situation with you alive and they get the bomb down, I, I guarantee you they're going to be checking that thing. Uh, oh yeah, I know. Like, exactly. oh, I can't I can't I can't ninja defuse anymore. Yeah yeah yeah. You've already <laughs> yeah no, hand, but no, it was worth it. Um, no way that's happening. Well, you know, I think that like you know, it seems that you have the right mentality to uh, you know be a champs like a contender and winner. So I'm. I'm hoping that if the rest of the team shares your mentality and your mindset, like I think Toronto Ultra is going to do pretty good. Yeah. yeah my, I mean, my, my last sort of, Oh, sorry. You go. No, go ahead. I was my last sort of questions. One of them was, uh, sorry, my brain just, um, how impactful do you think that's, I, I don't want to talk too much about it because it's been beaten. I think like to death is the like, Oh, champs is online. Like, like it is what it is. Like it's COVID, right? Like, no, I, in my opinion, like whatever, like it's not the ideal situation, but like it's a worldwide pandemic. Like what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, but like, how impactful really is that? Maybe for this team or for you as a player coming into champs, like, does it change how you prepare for it? Does it change really like the atmosphere and how it plays out? Or are you, are you just viewing this as like, hey, if it was online, we're gonna prepare the same way. If it was, you know, at land, we're gonna prepare the same way. Like, what are the sort of like, how does that um, change things? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think a lot of people lost motivation when it was announced online, and I think there's obvious correlation mm -hmm. between gameplay. It's like if you lose motivation, you lose the drive to win. You're not going to perform well. Yeah. Uh, fact of the matter is, we're online. We'd all like to be at a tournament, and that's, I'm sure every player, every CDL yeah. staff member, every league, everybody wants to be at LAN in a tournament because there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than seeing your friends, competing against your friends, and, yeah. and even just a, just seeing the celebration on stage, seeing it all come together, it's special. But I mean, this is the world we're in, and this is what we have, and we need to, like you said, we, we need to prepare for this tournament. Mm -hmm. as if we're going to play on a stage in front of thousands and that it, it's just that simple like we, we have to bring the same intensity every day and especially when we sit down for that match on champs day like we have yeah. you have to really like picture yourself in front of a crowd like yeah. you yeah. you need to put yourself in that moment and uh and play like it you know what i mean so there's no uh no room there, there's no excuses you, yeah. 
you can't not perform at champs and say, oh, it was online, who cares? Don't get me wrong. Some players are in some locations where online gameplay isn't optimal. I mean, it just it's just the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. But this is what we have, and we're going to make the best of it. I was going to say, not everybody has that Bell 5. Uh, there we go. Right there, right? Me, There's a sponsorship, baby. Let's go. get it. Um, yeah. I can use some of that, too. Yeah, first, <laughs> first, yeah, I think we can all use some of that Bell internet. Um, but yeah, Chris, any uh, any sort of uh, closing thoughts there? I think this has been personally. I've no, enjoyed no, the hell I out think, of it. Um, I think I think everything's been talked about and answered. Um, thanks, thanks a lot. I uh, want to say actually, something. Yeah, I was oh. just, well, for sure. Yeah. I was going to give right. it to you next. Spe- all right, Spencer and Chris were talking a lot of shit about my search <laughs> and destroy gameplay in one of the podcasts, and I was pissed about it, but they were right. So I was like sitting there like uh, shit. They got me. Yeah, and sure. uh, I was. Uh, I was motivated by it. I mean, I was still motivated without it, but I was like, I, I sent you guys a DM. Uh, yeah. I was like, big yeah. fan of the podcast. I got you in search this weekend. Yeah. And uh, anything to say now? Man, man, hey, listen, if I can get, I'm... if all I have to do is talk a little bit of shit to get performances like that to make you close this 1v2s, I'll talk shit all day because he definitely shut us up. I literally was watching it. I was like, this guy's, I swear to God, like he's going to shut us up. And sure enough, the entire fucking weekend. So, I mean, obviously, uh, I do think, struggled a little bit in the last tournament but uh i mean congrats on bouncing no, back I, man and I, I think you fucking, hold on. You fucking i was awful it. in the last tournament you don't have sugar coat i was <laughs> I, I thought i was abysmal but hey this is the one that matters and i'm oh, just happy sure. that you know um, i'm finally happy with where i am as a player in this game i think it took long enough i was just too inconsistent all year i was i was either really good or i was awful and that there's no room for that so let's hope oh, we bring oh. this let, let's hope i bring the same gameplay to the, to the big one and uh we'll go from there yeah yeah like it was literally like i cannot be eating my words more right now um <laughs> i just i literally i just looked at the stats that you went from a, a 0.46 to a like pretty much a 1.15 i had a 0.46 that's so yeah. bad <laughs> that's like awful that's <laughs> yeah. that's beyond but, awful yeah but i mean if you want to look at how well you improved you improved at the right time yeah like, exactly the very end. it what was free to... sleep and yeah, honestly, and also, like it was also a super different meta. Like it was one of those things where I was like, man, like I don't want to put too much stock into one game. Yeah. Um, but obviously, like you gotta say what you see. But yeah, yeah like the sure. three yard was super, and the, and the ten millimeter gets banned. It gets G eight or whatever. It comes back, so it's like, I'm like I don't know how much like that plays into it. Obviously, like I think Novus tweeted out um like the pace of play during the engagements, and it was like, you know, the, the New York and Chicago were at the bottom, and then you guys in phase at the very top. So I was like, I yeah. wonder if this was like uh, maybe they're playing a little bit too quickly given the current meta. So uh, there's a couple sure. things there, but. Um, I still, dude, I was riding high for the next like few days. I was even oh, telling yeah. Chris this morning, I was like, man, I can't believe Toronto actually fucking won that thing. It's insane, dude. Like my friends went out camping oh. and I literally couldn't go Portage because I was like, I gotta watch the ultra plane, man. Like it's really, it's, yeah, yeah. I was like, I couldn't do it. Yeah. That's like, awesome. I, I had to, I had to watch that. There's too much potential there and I'm so glad I didn't go. Too much um, potential. But, um, yeah, with that, once again, I thank you again for coming on. This has been absolutely awesome to chat with you. Um, I think you're heading off to scrims now, so we hope you do well in scrims this afternoon. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and yeah, and, uh, I mean, we'll... again, thanks so much for coming on. Any other stuff you want to say about like where to find you? Like, we'll put all your Twitch and your Twitter and, and yeah, your YouTube. No. I mean, there's no way anyone watches us and not you, but just in case for some <laughs> reason, um, any of the fire yeah, fans out there. Yeah, I mean, listen, I have enough followers, right? So you go follow Kleenex, Bance, Cami, Classic, <laughs> Marky B, Flux, and the Toronto Ultra Twitter. All right, I'm all right, good we'll on put followers. All that stuff there. Follow follow because those boys. You love to see it, man. Good at COD, and he's a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So thanks so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It. Fantastic. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. As always, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and enjoy.